Welcome back to Tell Flare Mouse. The Minet ball invented in the 1800s was one of the biggest advances in bullet design since the invention of the firearm. In a previous video, we proved that this design was stable not only through rifling but also without any spin at all. This was not only a surprise to us but also to many historians. Today we're bringing the Minet ball to the 21st century. Instead of being made out of lead, this is made out of a special thermoplastic with a steel ball bearing or bearing ball inside. The 50 caliber steel ball is mounted as far forward as possible, making this very nose heavy. And the plan here is to propel these at rifle-like velocities out of a 12 gauge. The target velocity will be around 2,000 feet per second, and we're able to do that just simply because these are a relatively lightweight projectile. So why not make these as light as possible and get the most velocity? Because you need uh, enough mass there to build up enough pressure inside the chamber to get the powder burning, and the projectile would no longer be nose heavy. Fifteen seventy-eight. Sixteen forty-nine. A little, a little better. The Ghost Menets held up well for the low power test, but can we get these up to two thousand feet per second? Let's find out. Welcome back, Tau Flater folks. Jeff, Officer Greg, and special guest shooter Drew, down from Oregon. Drew's a Marine up in uh, up in Central Oregon, and uh, today we're bringing you the what? Hot glue Menet balls. Yeah. Sounds like the name of a band. <laughs> it's a steel ball bearing that Jeff has uh, implanted, impregnated into a chunk of hot glue. And uh, Marine Drew is going to fire these things out of a smooth bore uh, shotgun. Yeah. So uh, we're going to see how accurate they are, how oh, accurate he we, is. We're no doing this video because the other video we we're, we were going to do, I have to go back a couple steps and do some reloads and. Yeah, we started with a different project out here today that yeah. failed miserably. So instead of showing you that failure on camera and getting endless pages of comments about what we should have done, we're instead going to uh, revert to another round here and uh, shoot it out of a, a smoothbore shotgun. So let's take a look. Doug's waiting for us downrange. He's been whistling for us. So uh, we're going to send one in to Doug and see how they go. Let's do it. Even at the blue tape, military body armor <laughs> soft body armor level 17a yeah we don't know what it's for small arms <laughs> and doug has some small arms he look at those things he does <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm ready anytime you're ready oh and not bad look at that oh that thing was moving well, we had a very accurate projectile, but looking at the Kronos high-speed camera footage, we can see that the ball had actually shifted back a little bit, throwing off its balance. This is because the bullet is subjected to over 15,000 Gs, maybe even more than that, during the firing cycle. But at least we came very close to the target velocity of 2,000 feet per second. So we got the chunk of hot glue laid right in there. Where's the ball? That's exactly what the question is. Where is the ball? I don't know. That one was accurate. It looked like it was flying kind of sideways, though. Go ahead and pull that ball down. Here's how we know the ball did not pass all the way through. <laughs> and here's what's kind of cool. So it was marked here at the military with a 001 in Sharpie. That transferred off onto Doug's Gitmo shirt. Look at that. Think of the force it takes to do something like that. Yeah, uh, screen printing force. Yeah. Like Jedi Force. Where, where's the ball? Oh, gee, it's not Jedi Force. That's actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where the ball is. We can't find the balls. Aiming at the vest, right? Uh, <laughs> I am now. You know, uh, who wants to make a bed and lift a bungee cord? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Right. Oh! Wow. And I think he hit the bungee cord. Yeah. Look at that stuffing out the back. Hey, it stayed hooked to the pole. Yeah, he barely moved. Ooh, wow. I think he hit the bungee cord. Yeah. Although it's difficult to see, I believe this one also suffered the same problem that the first shot had, where the ball actually shifted back, throwing off the balance and accuracy. Still, at that velocity, the damage was pretty impressive. The ball went through the Kevlar vest and through the giant teddy bear. 
and of course it went through the bungee cord. It's funny, anytime we put a bungee cord on a target like that, it seems like nine times out of 10, the slug will hit it. Okay, throw a rifle choke at our very cool watermelon. Cool Carl. I'm ready. Oh, took off his left ear. Oh, yeah. That was a... Using the rifle choke, we had a, a moderate amount of spin. But again, I think we had that same problem where the ball shifted back and kind of threw off its balance. Now, it's easy to look at this thing in hindsight and, you know, realize there's a problem. But we really don't know there's a problem until we come home and analyze the footage. In the following test, we just went back to the smoothbore shotgun. We're ready. Oh, top of his head. Look at his glasses down there on the ground. Now this is an odd one because we were using a smooth bore, no rifling, and we had a little bit of a spin still. Now you may have noticed that the entire tip of the projectile fell off. The accuracy was just so-so, but we're not gonna be able to hit a, a small target with something like that until we get this thing flying right. We want it accurate, fast and stable flying. So in order to hit this relatively small meat target, dead center, we put the entire round in ice water to chill it down, make that hot glue even harder. Oh, oh yes. Actually, it probably was about centered. <laughs> And that crazy idea of putting in ice water actually worked. And if I can be honest, I gave it zero chance of working. Not only did we have an accurate slug, but it left a really cool vapor trail behind it. Not sure why that is. Maybe it was wet. I have no idea. But look at that dead center shot. That thing went all the way through that entire length of meat. I love it when a plan works out, even when I have a lot of doubts about it. <laughs> so where did, where did the round hit though? This is the exit. That's the exit. Hit dead center in the end of that little what three by three target you had there. Yeah. yeah. Filleted that thing out, blew it out. And it went all the way through. Yeah. 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 So he's got official meat curtains now. <laughs> <laughs> they hang like sleeve of wizard. I offered Drew a dollar if he would wear that right now on top of it. <laughs> and being a college student in Oregon, he actually considered it. <laughs> he had to think about it, right? More money than I'm making right now, so. <laughs> then I remembered. Then I remembered he's actually going to ride home with me in the truck. I thought, you know, maybe not a meat helmet this time. You and your pork helmet. Pork helmet. That was perfect shot placement. That's how. That's what Marines do, though. You know, right? Oh, yeah. When it comes down to destroying meat, you shake things and we grow mustaches. <laughs> and you've done both very well. We, we did it. <laughs> you should promote. Mission accomplished. You can go home. Yep. Well, that was expired pork loin, just so everybody doesn't, uh, you know, shit a multicolored brick over uh, wasting, <laughs> wasting meat. That was given. Yeah, to us. yeah. You can see by the color, it's kind of funky. Yeah. And, and the coyotes. Are I wouldn't even be touching it. Why are you touching oh, it? No, he loves it. That's... Done worse. To oh, be honest. Oh, okay. This isn't a low for me yeah, at this all. This is like a. <laughs> it's like a. He's like Friday night for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for coming out and shooting with us. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is more sun than you've ever had in Oregon. <laughs> I know. I'm burnt to the core right now. 15 but... years. Yeah. Yeah. Like I offered a sunblock and everything. Yeah. Pasty Irish kid out here in this blazing hot California sun. That's right. <laughs> Sunscreen's a crutch. So. <laughs> That's right. It's a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Cancer you will make you. Gotta you. have a nice layer of, ca of cancer, skin oh, yeah. cancer yeah. to protect you. You know. Cancer will make the, you the, tough. Make yeah. You That's right. Character. <laughs> All well, right. that's it. A little impromptu video. We didn't plan on this, but luckily we brought these rounds along just, and they worked out pretty well. The Manet, 21st century Manet ball.